So good to have you here today. And uh, every week, every week it's our desire that you just experience the presence of God. And so thank you for that. We're so excited today because we have our, our very good friends, our missionary friends from Brazil are here. Look at that. Some of our uh, students uh, were able to go this earlier this year, this summer, and, and help out there and do some missions work. Yeah, I heard they did a lot of eating and a lot of... <laughs> fun stuff, but uh, we're, we're just so thankful to have Skip and Debbie. Skip and Debbie are uh, just very close friends of Sharice and I and friends of this church. We consider their, the church there in Brazil a partner church with us. Matter of fact, we have uh, one of their uh, students that is with us, an intern. I don't know where she's at. But she's, she's, I think she's serving in the kids' ministry right now. We've already put her to work. And uh, we're so glad to have them. Come on up, Skip. And uh, Skip, uh, Pastor Skip. <laughs> I was reminding some people, or may not know this, but I was reminding uh, in the last service some of the people that you used to be the youth pastor here uh -huh. before I got here, like you said 30 years ago. Uh -huh. And I mentioned that was even before I was born. So I mean, it's just <laughs> so good that I have my elder here with me today. <laughs> but uh, Debbie, we love you, and uh, it's so sweet. And uh, again, we're just glad to have you guys. You guys are ready to hear the word of God today. We're getting ready to be blessed. And so, good to have you here. Thank you very much. Well, we bring you blessings from a Igreja das Nações, Church of the Nations, uh, in Brazil. You know, we go back even further, uh, further than that. When I went to high school, uh, Pastor James was in primary school. Um, maybe next time that I'm here, if they invite us back, uh, I will bring you a picture from our yearbook of him. Uh, yeah, so we, Mama Bird, we go, we, I mean, we go way, way back, all the birds. So uh, it's kind of fun. Oh, what a privilege for us. Um, uh, like Pastor James said, we feel so, we're so close, uh, bound in friendship, in covenant, and our churches are so connected, uh, and even more so uh, with the visit of, of uh, some of your young people that went there, and uh, some of our young people who have come here. So we believe that even more of that's going to happen in the future. Amen? I want to talk this morning about, um, oh man, you know when those, those messages, you know, you're, 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 you're sharing them because the Lord's put them on your heart, but also, you know, it's like one of those great messages for you even, even on, a, on a personal level. Uh, I want to show you an example of, of basically my tendencies as, as a person. Uh, go ahead and show that first slide. So here's the reaction of the, the, the women. You know, when a reaction when a friend goes uh, and gets into a relation, and that's like the one friend saying, oh my goodness, I'm so happy for you. Men are a little bit different. Go ahead. Is she blind? <laughs> when, I, when I saw this, it was like, yeah, that, that's funny, and, and this and that. It's like... I realize that it's like my tendency, I don't know where that came from. I, I know our families are different. Debbie, Debbie and my family is a little bit different. Our family, uh, you know, if it's funny, that's, gonna, that's way better than uh, if it's nice. And uh, so I just kind of came from that. And it's funny because I'm not, just, not just my friends were like that. It's just I found myself rolling into that, uh, that direction. Let me show you the next slide. One lady says to the other lady, my New Year's resolution is to stop putting my foot in my mouth all the time. I bet yours is losing weight, huh? 
I have a guy, I, I have a, a pastor friend that, that, I mean, we see each other maybe once a year, maybe uh, twice a year. And I mean, you know, when I say friend, I'm just saying just kind of acquaintance friend. And, and uh, it's like every time that he comes and, and, and greets me, he's like, oh. And in Brazil, they, they say, did a, uh, a round uh, bowling ball come with that shirt? It's uh, kind of an expression that they, that they say. I'm sure in English we got uh, some equivalents, but uh, making reference to um, the shape of my shirt when I'm wearing it. You know, you know what I'm saying? And so, so th- this pastor, whenever he said, oh, gain some weight, huh, Skip? And it's like year after year after year after year, this guy would just make his little, his little comments, you know? It's like, okay, the first time, you know, you giggle. The second time, you know, you kind of giggle. And, and I pulled him aside one time, and I go, look, I, I just want to say this thing, you know? Just kind of just thought, yeah, how many words a year do we say to, to each other? And he goes, oh, not much. We don't, we don't you know, it's like, I, I said, maybe what, 10, 15 words? I said, do you realize that every year, the 10 or 15 words you choose are about my weight? And I said, look, it's, it's like I'm not like, it's like oh, I'm, I'm so affected, I'm so, so sad or whatever. It, it's just like, couldn't we choose, let's choose 15 words that we can say differently to each other. And it was really interesting how, because sometimes these talks don't go as well as they, they worked out in my head that I thought they were going <laughs> to be. But you know what's really interesting is from that day forward, he chose 15 different words. And him and I, it's like, now we, we, it's like there's more to talk about, and it's a really neat thing. Isn't it funny how, because this is not a mean man, this is not a bad person. But what happens is, especially if we come from a family culture where everybody kind of just jokes around a lot and just wants to to be funny, it's not like we're trying to be mean or we're saying, oh, I want to hurt this person. What it is is just kind of our natural thing to create a bridge between us. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and because my intention is to create a bridge, a conversational bridge, um, I don't really know what to say, so I'll say it. I'll, I'll go to this place that's comfortable because that's the way my family used to do it. And what happens is there is a better way. We can build a conversational bridge in the same way, but we can do it through encouragement. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. I got a couple more slides. Some things are better left unsaid, which I generally realize right after I said them. Next. I don't know how this got in here. Don't, please don't judge me. I have no idea how that slide got in there. And I think the last one is, remember, if you can't say something nice, make it funny. That was uh, the, 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 how, how I, was, I grew up. I just thought that was the best way. And after I went to Bible school, I found out, I, I, I met a Brazilian friend that was a girl. And she was like, look, being funny is not the most important thing, especially if it's hurtful. And I was like, are you sure? You know, I just kind of doubted her. Uh, In the end, I didn't realize it was a pickup line that she was trying to get me married to her. And and so uh, it all all worked out. Okay, uh, so which brings us to the title of this message, which is uh, The Acts of an Encourager. In Acts, uh, Acts 4, we're going to be talking this morning about uh, Barnabas, whose, whose name actually means son of encouragement. So I just want to kind of pull out some, some uh, verses, because so often we think of <clears throat> oh, um, uh, uh, words of affirmation is my love language, oh, uh, uh, say something encouraging, and we always kind of equate that with, oh, be positive, just say something positive, and uh, even if it's not really true, just say it, because that, you know people need to hear that. And I don't believe that that's so true, that people need to hear that. The first point is, Find a needy person and bless them. Be a load lifter. Acts 4.36 says this, Joseph, it is not called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So what had happened is Barnabas had seen uh, uh, like a financial need, and he says, you know what? I'm going to bless these people with this, with this, this gift. And it's like I believe that in our... Um, in our desire to be Christ-like, 
that we should be blessing people. I mean, there's, there's, it's, it talks about tithes and offerings, you know, tithes being uh, the 10% and the offerings being beyond that 10%. And it's like, it has been so nice. I, have you ever been blessed by somebody that just gave you an offering? It's like, I know <clears throat> several points in my life, uh, one time when, when I was trying to make a payment in my, uh, the Bible school, I was really, really, really tight. And I went there to make the payment, find, scrape the money together, and I was there to make the payment. And uh, the administration said, you don't have to pay this month because somebody else has paid your, uh, your tuition this month. And I, I said, well, who did this? And they said, no, the person wanted to remain anonymous. And it was a beautiful thing. I, to this day, I, I, I remember every once in a while going, God, bless whoever that person was that is anonymous. That anonymous person, bless them extra because they so bless me. And it's like sometimes, I, I, it's not all the time that we can be anonymous in our giving, but when we do, what ends up happening is we can be sure of our motives, that our motives is not to get something in return. Our motive is not to be like, oh, that person was so nice to me. But it, it, it's like just, just doing, finding a need that somebody has and being a load lifter. I remember a, a visit from my uncle my, I, I, we were talking about how different uh, the family was, uh, Debbie's family and my family. Debbie comes from, I mean, a long line of pastors. Every, it's like if you're from Debbie's family, a uh, pastor is pretty much what's, what you're going to become. Uh, all five of her siblings, all five of them are all uh, in full-time uh, pastoring ministries. Uh, her great-grandpa, he was, he was going down the wrong direction. He died one half hour later. Somebody prayed for him. He rose from the dead. And he said when he was dead, God, Jesus spoke to him and told him he needed to become a preacher, and that's what he became. And through this long line, there you have Debbie's family, very near perfect, okay? Yeah, and uh, now let me introduce you to my family, okay? Who is kind of on the other spectrum of, uh, of that. We are uh, a very different bunch. Uh, my family likes to joke. Uh, uh, most of them uh, uh, don't come to church and uh, uh, are, are, are kind of in that direction. My, my uncle, see, see, we come from a, a, a lineage of farmers. And my uncle, he was a very, uh, from what I understand, a very successful farmer. He did, did really good. Uh, he might as well farm an acre of, uh, uh, an acre of land. Uh, the, the, his crop was something that got legalized here in California just a few years ago. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I was I having a visit. My uncle, he's just total hippie, been hippie, uh, uh, he, f hippie from the 70s, 60s, and he's still, he's still that way. Yeah, my uncle, he decided, too, that to buy a piece of land to farm his crop would be quite expensive, so he decided, you know, the federal government has lots of land that it doesn't seem to be using, so why not farm my crop on its land, which landed him in jail for quite a long time because he was doing this farming on federal land. So here is my family. Uh, yeah, no claps, huh? <laughs> Just clap for her family, right? Uh-huh, yeah. I, I <laughs> oh, thank the Lord. You know, he, he saves us all no matter where we came from. And uh, so my, my uncle's going to come visit me. And I, it was during a real tough time, you know, just a uh, real tough time in my financial life. And I didn't have, I didn't have like even food to, to serve them. I, you know, he was just coming for a couple hours. I thought, I'll just make him coffee. Coffee's cheap, right? Uh, at least the coffee I was buying. And so, so it was like he was coming over. And when he came over, I remember he had sacks and sacks of groceries that he had gone to the grocery store beforehand. And he came in and... I had never, I don't know if anybody has ever taken you groceries in your life. If you've ever been at that point where you needed groceries and somebody actually brought them. And I'm telling you, I, I, no one had ever done that to me before. I, 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 probably because I was living with my parents. It was di a different situation. And he brought those things and it was like, I got so blessed by somebody doing that. And he just filled that cupboard with, with all kinds of, you know, health food like Top Ramen and, and things like that. Uh, uh, and I just felt so blessed. He stayed a couple hours, then he headed out. And about a week later, I was going to make a, a phone call, 
I didn't make too many phone calls. In those days, we didn't have cell phones. We had uh, rotary phones, you know, the kind of... <laughs> and uh, I went there to make a phone call. And as I was sticking my finger in there to, to make the, the call, I looked and tucked in between that, that dial that's plastic was a $100 bill just fold it up in the, into a, a tight little square. It was just kind of stuck in there. Almost like, you know, I, 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 I just want to bless you even further. So it was like that blessing and then even more of a blessing. Wow. Have you ever met a needy person? you ever been a needy person? And somebody did that? As Christians, as Christians, people filled with the Holy Spirit. What if, imagine, if we became people that were in tune, that, that, that cleared out the static and, 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 and what, had our antennas all cleaned out, ready to hear from God, to bless a needy person. And I'm not talking about people that say they're needy. Uh, uh, there's people that are, are, are quick to tell you about, about their needs, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. What I'm saying is there are people that would never tell you about their need. And you know, you don't have to be prophetic to bless somebody who tells you about their needs. But I'll tell you, when, and, and this is where I'm saying is, we are filled with the power of God in our lives. We are filled with the Holy Spirit in our life. Why not tap into that a little more? Why not be even more prophetic in our giving? God, is there somebody you want me to bless? Is there some need that you want me to help me uh, uh, meet during this week or during this day? And we do something like that, and what ends up happening is these people, they get a glimpse of Jesus in their life. And the Bible talks about us being salt and light and, and affecting people, and we, we, we understand on certain levels what that means. But it's a whole different level when people are, 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 are met in their prophetic need, let's say, that they have. God orchestrating a thing finding a need, and meeting it with somebody that wants to express Jesus in their lives. All right? The second thing, the next thing is uh, find a lonely person and include them. Be a friend finder. Paul, he was, uh, he was persecuting Christians. He was killing them, okay? So it's like, hey, are you a Christian? And the person say yes, then he'd kill them. You know, that it was what he was doing. He thought he was doing the Lord's work. He, he really did. Then he has the, the, the experience, you know, he's blinded, you know, here's the voice, this whole thing. And so now he's a Christian. And it's interesting because it says, when he came to Jerusalem, Paul <clears throat> tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing he was a real disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly the name of of the Lord. And then from there, it just like started gaining more momentum. Barnabas was the guy that, that, that encouraged him. Now, man, I'm a friend finder. I'm, I, I include this guy in, uh, in, in, in our fellowship right here. I don't know if you've ever I, felt lonely in your life. Have you ever felt like that point where you're just like, oh, I just feel so lonely? I know in my personal life, I've never really felt lonely being alone. But I, the, probably the loneliest moments that I, I have felt in, in different stages of my life, I was always with kind of around a whole bunch of people, and it just didn't seem like I was part of that group. And it's like, you know, it's so easy, especially us as Christians, we love fellowship, don't we? I, I mean, there's something about that connection that we have. It's a spiritual connection. And so when we're here, it's like we got all this work that we do. We got, we got, we're around the world. We're doing all this thing during the week. It's like Sunday or, or on that Wednesday night or in that special meeting. It's like we're around our friends and stuff. And, and we all have the, the, that, that deep love of Jesus as, as that thing that connects us. And so what happens is we want to be around them. Isn't it so, so nice to be around these, our friends and people that, that we really kind of connect with? Every once in a while, when we're with that, we also see people that aren't part of that group. And it's like, we as Christians, and doing this Barnabas thing, this encouragement thing, is when we see that, it's so easy to include people in a, in a, in a, in a, in a group. So often, like in our church, we, we teach how to socially even do this. Young people, listen to this. This is, this is like amazing. We, so, so we have a group of people, and we're talking about a subject. What will so often happen is an, another young person will kind of come, and they will come within a vicinity of the group, right? And they kind of stand there for a moment. 
And it's like just kind of, I don't know where we learn these social, these social practices, but we kind of know if the group stays kind of in a circle, it's just like we're kind of talking about a personal thing, so it's kind of better you just find a different group. I'll tell you, this is how the world, this is how worldly people uh, function. This is a normal thing, how we do it. But I'll tell you, you know how disciples do it? The Bible is very interesting. You will know that we are the, his, his disciples by our love. And I'll tell you, love includes. And so all you have to do, and, and all you have to do, young people, older people, medium-aged people, is as you have your, your group, with your arm extended like this, you break, you break open that circle and you say, John, come here real, real quick. Come, come on, come, come into the group. And then what, what's John going to do? Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. But does he really think, no, it's okay? He's really like going, I really want to go in there, but it's okay. And then you go, no, 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 come here, come here. And then what you do is you're, you're talking about whatever subject you're talking about. Oh, just give him a four-second, a five-second maximum uh, uh, a review of what, what you're talking about and say, hey, we're just talking about uh, that sermon that, that, uh, that happened last Sunday and, and we were talking about this aspect. And then you go back to your thing and then he's part of this group and this and that. You know what? When a lonely person, somebody that's lonely, you feel really loved when people do that, don't you? And I'm telling you, man, uh, like uh, this is where, in this, this uh, atmosphere of Christians, we need to do this more. Find a lonely person and be a friend. Next point. Find a misunderstood person and affirm him. Be a bridge builder. You know, uh, the, after the, it says now that those who have been scattered by the persecution uh, uh, broke out when Stephen was killed. So Stephen was killed and then and all the Christians just kind of scattered. So the Lord's hand was with those, with those people and a great number of them believed. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch because they, they wanted to see, is this a real thing? Is this, is this uh, 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 something of God or not? But when he arrived, he saw the grace that God had done, and he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with their, with their hearts. So it was like, there was this misunderstood thing that was going on, and it was like, we're trying to make sure that this is really something of God or not. And he's like, he's like kind of just gives them the benefit of the doubt. And he goes there, and he touches it, and he goes, man, this is a God thing. And so he brings, out, he brings that, that word to, uh, to uh, his leaders and stuff. Man, this is, this is God moving, and he encourages them. The fourth thing. Find a, a potential person and develop them. Be a disciple maker. In uh, verse 25 and 26, it says, Barnabas went to Troas to look for Saul, and he found him, and he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And it's like finding potential in a person is a beautiful, beautiful thing. You know, when somebody's already got whatever, and it's like, oh, I, sometimes I'll, I'll see, even in the church, it's like, oh, that person's a worship leader. Oh, that person's a this and that. And everybody kind of just impressed and, and just wanting to hang out with, with that kind of person. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'll tell you, this other level of, of an encourager, they do something different too, beyond that. They'd find people who you know there's some potential. Have you ever, you ever seen people? Sometimes it's even your own kids. Sometimes it's, it's friends. Sometimes it's, it's other people. And you say, now, there is, there is more potential in that person than they even realize. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. And it's like, it's like when somebody does that, it is amazing because what's happening is you are seeing beyond the tangible. You are seeing what that person really, God has that, God has a destiny for for you, and it's bigger than you're even realizing. And, and you being involved in the life of that person could even help reach that. You know, how many books of the Bible did Barnabas write? Does anybody know? Probably none of them. But he was involved encouraging the life of Paul and John Mark. So you're talking about people who have written more than the, the half of the New Testament. He was involved, but he didn't write his book, and he's not got his name, Mr. Famous, uh, 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 in it, but he was highly, highly used. And so often, that's how God wants to use us in our ministries. 
You know what? God wants all of you. We're not the missionaries here. Debbie and I are not the missionaries here. We are the missionaries here. You are just as much missionaries as we are. As you go to that place where you work and where there's not a lot of light of the gospel in that place, I'm telling you, God is wanting you to be that light and that salt. And how do you do that without being weird? That's a big question we have, right? You know, bringing your Bible and just saying, okay, I'm using this break time to preach and um, here's some, uh, here's some uh, extra uh, uh, bulletins that I got from our church, you know, and it's, not, it's like, I'm not saying if you've done that, uh, I'm sorry if I'm making fun of you a little bit, but uh, I don't mean to. What I'm saying, at least he's trying, at least that person's trying. But what we can do is we can do something that, all, that is more effective and that is find a way to encourage those types of people. You know, we, we don't have, no, I did it through Facebook, you know, and I, I, post, I reposted this, this picture of a serene setting with a verse on it and stuff like that. Okay, it, it, that might help, you know, I'm not saying that people won't be blessed by that, but we are called to do more things. And more things that involve touching, more, more things that involve a prophetic, a, a prophetic ministering to people. Go ahead and show that, that, that point one more time. Find a failing person and restore him. Be a failure fixer. Before that is, find a potential person and develop him. Be a disciple maker. I just want to say one last thing about that, uh, that point. I remember somebody did that to me. When I went to Bible school, I was, I, I was not like, I, I mean, I was a recently Pentecostal person. I I had been a, uh, a Nazarene my whole life. My whole life, meaning my, my parents started taking me to the Nazarene church. I don't know if you know that, that, that church on Hammer Lane, almost to 99 on the, on the right side, that little church right there. That was my church. And I love that church. I love my pastor. I love our youth group. It was a great thing. But it was interesting. As I was on Pacific Avenue, uh, a different ministry had, had opened up a coffeehouse ministry and they started sharing with me about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and, and, and baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it was there that they said, hey, do you want more? And I'm like, yeah, I want more. And they're like going, okay, let's go into this room. And I'm like going, oh, you got to go into a room to get, a, <laughs> to get more? What's, what's going on here? But it was really interesting. It was just a, it was a quiet place. I got on my knees and I said, God, I want this gift. I want, I want more. It's really interesting how what happens is with the, with the gift of the Holy Spirit, I, I used to have this, this hard thing, this whole speaking in tongues thing was kind of, kind of, uh, uh, I had to work it through. But then when I realized that the chief emphasis of being filled with the Spirit isn't so much speaking in tongues, but speaking the words of Jesus to the lives of other people living because the, the, when we're filled with the holy spirit we are filled with the power to do these things and what's happening is and this is where my concern is even us as pentecostals is is that we're not we're not uh, uh, seeking enough a prophetic word to have prophetic actions in our lives and imagine if we do this not just encouraging god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you it's, it's interesting. I was, I was sharing the story. The I, I have a, a friend that's really prophetic in the churches, and man, he says things, and it's like amazing. It's like obviously, I mean, amazingly used by God. And I asked him, when was the first time that you got got used by God like this? He goes, you know what? I, I prayed to God. I was a Christian, got filled with the Holy Spirit. I just said, God, I want I want to be prophetic. I want a prophetic word. And he said, he said that he uh, he asked for a, a, a word. And when he was in the line in the grocery store, he said, God said, tell that lady that God loves her. And he goes, no, I want a real word. Like, y you know what I mean? It's almost like these guys, oh, there's somebody here with a headache. Oh, there is, you know, 3,000 people. It's, oh, well, there's somebody with a headache, you know. I, I'm like, I want the word, you know. It's like, and he was like that. He's like, I want the word. Like, I want, her name is Susie, and, and tell her Susie that uh, God loves her. That's what he was wanting. But he didn't get that. What he got was, tell her that God loves her. And he's like, man, I don't, want, I don't want such a baby word. I want a real word. And he was getting closer and closer. Finally, he was like, he didn't have anything else. So he says, look, uh, I'm a Christian, and I feel that God's just telling me to tell you that he loves you. And the lady immediately, immediately broke down. Immediately broke down. 
And what had happened was, he, they ended up closing the line, they took her to the side. What ended up happening was, she told the guy, that my friend, she says, I, I had decided to take my life. And, but I'd remembered that I, I didn't want to do it before my shift at work, because then I'd leave my boss in a lurch, and these guys have been so good to me. And so what I did, decided to do, I'd go to, go to work, and then I would do it after I got back. And she said, but I said this, and it was really weird because I don't really even believe in God, but I kind of prayed, and I said, God, if you're really alive, tell me that you love me before I do this. And so, amazing, right? This is what happens. It doesn't have to be this big dynamic thing. It just needs to be this prophetic thing that we do. Uh, uh, acts of encouragement in the right moment. And it's like this, uh, this kinds of things impact the lives of others. We know be, when, when people do it to us, what an amazing thing is. When people see potential in us before uh, uh, it's, it's shown. We know when people minister and, and even help us when, when we're having a financial load or any kinds of things like that, we know what it does to us. And it's like we, all we have to do is pray, and God wants to use us in this way. This is how we are going to impact the generation with the gospel of Christ. It's not going to be just, no, the, the, what we do is we bring people to church and then we let the pastor do it or we bring them to church and we let the leaders do it. And it's like, it's like it's easy to get into that. I remember I thought that's the way you did it. But when I got this revelation that, no, he's wanting to use all of us to do the same thing, it's amazing. We become those missionaries, amen? amen. I want to ask you to go ahead and stand up. I want to call the ministry team here. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for opportunities for you. If you feel like you want some more ministry, some more prayer, the ministry team is here, going to be here to minister to you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open up an opportunity, a prophetic opportunity for each and every one of us. At least one opportunity per day for the next week. I pray that our lives would be would be touched. Help us to open up the, our, our Holy Spirit antenna to hear your word. And when you say this one and say this, that we would, we would be obedient, independent if it's some amazing word or if it's something so simple as to say, God loves you. I pray, God, for each and every missionary that's here today. God, let us touch the lives of those we work with, that we study with, that we go to church with. Help us to impact our families. Help us to touch those people in our family who are still unsaved. If you have somebody that's unsaved in your family, go ahead and lift your hand. Think about what, what that, that person's name, you can even say it. Father, I pray for every single person that's here that has somebody unsaved in their family. God, what a, what a difficult process it is to, to sometimes share Jesus with our family. I pray, God, that you would give a prophetic word to each and every one of us that have been unsaved in our hearts. And I pray a blessing upon each and every missionary here. Send us. We raise our hands and we say, here am I. Send me. And I pray, God, that you would send each and every one out in your precious, precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an amazing week. One a day, okay?